Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Wood stoves are super popular these days, in particular because you don't have to carry fuel with you. You just have to find wood or twigs or something on the trail to fuel your stove. Now the company Patagonia has been a leader in the outdoor industry for years and years. So when they let out their own stove, I think we need to pay attention to it. Let's see what it's all about. Thanks for watching guys. Now this stove is part of what they call their untether kit. It is to get people outside untethered from the normal world and get outside and back to nature. We're gonna be looking at the stove itself as well as a separate pot that they sell that it nests inside of. Let me show you guys some details. Here is the case. This outer case is for the pot. I'll pull that out real quick. All right, you can see it. And we'll pull out the stove itself. There it is. The weight of the stove is 9.2 ounces. It is made out of stainless steel and it is made in the Philippines. It is a collapsible three-piece design, as you can see. Pretty simple to put together. You just put that part down, put this over the top, and then nest this in. Just like that. And that is your stove. Very, very simple, as you can see. Give you a tour around it. See if y'all see anything missing. There it is. $99, $99 for this thing. This is the Quantum Mirror Pot. Patagonia says it's designed to pair seamlessly with this. The mirror technology, the Quantum Mirror technology is basically their uh, heat distribution system at the bottom. This is copper at the bottom right here. The weight of this pot with the lid is 12 ounces. It's made, as I said, stainless steel on top copper on the bottom made in china has very nice folding handles okay it has a silicone lid i would assume this is fairly heat proof but i don't know that for sure it does have integrated volume markers as you can see cups as well as liter price is 50 dollars, which actually i think is fairly reasonable this is a really nice pot um, probably the better part of this kit it has these little star-shaped marks okay and those star-shaped marks are supposed to lock in or, or you know, center with this. And they do, but they really don't. I mean, they're there. It just gives you a very, very small feeling of comfort, but it's a very, very small feeling of comfort. Let me get this thing fired up. You guys see how it works. It does burn pretty well. So uh, we'll get it rolling and we'll boil up a little bit of water. All right, so we've got it right there. You do want this on a very level piece of ground. It is a little bit top heavy, okay? Now what I've found is best to do is to use a little bit of shavings at the bottom, okay? These are what I always use on my channel, which are wood shavings from turning wood at the house. And then I've got some pretty dry firewood here, which is just cut up into small pieces. Works super well. One more little piece in here. And then the last thing we'll do is put some more shavings right on top. You want those to go right down through and around all that wood at the bottom there. I've got my little fire kit here. It's just a little small fire kit from the Hidden Woodsman filled with several things. One of which is some fire plugs by Pro Camp Tech. My favorite to get stoves like this lit. In fact, you know what? I've got my little light my fire fill rod here. So let's, I just kind of fluff it like that. Break it up in half. It'll catch a flame really easily like that. Just get as close as we can here. There we go. Took a second. Wind is pretty strong, so I want to be nice and careful out here. We just have to be patient. It's packed pretty well. One of the problems with this stove is it doesn't have great ventilation. Um, it does have some, and that way it will, it will start. Uh, if it had a few more holes with this technique, it would start even better. Now, while that is going, one of the things I will tell you, we're gonna put a little bit of water in this pot. When you are 
getting this thing going, um, just gonna put a cup of water in here, make some coffee. When you're getting this thing going, you wanna let it establish pretty well before you put the pot on because it can extinguish it if it's not going well enough. It's going pretty good right now. I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds or so. A couple of times in my testing, like I said, I've put the pot on a little bit early and it doesn't extinguish it, but it really stops it from developing. So this looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and put our pot on and let's see how she burns. So let's have a chat about this stove and we'll start with some pros and cons. It's well constructed. It does burn pretty hot for a single walled stove and it is a single walled stove so it has that liability. It does pack down small. It's very simple to set up and it's very simple to use with different size pots which is always a plus. Unfortunately there are quite a few negatives as well and they may outweigh the positives. First of all it's just heavy. It is extremely heavy compared to a lot of stoves out there. It's also very hard to see inside of the stove. It's, it's almost impossible to feed it without taking the pot off and that's a real pain in the rear. Now it's not a huge deal necessarily but you would think that if you're gonna have a wood stove that you have to fill with wood to burn they would give you some way to put it in there but they didn't. It's really not the most stable design. It doesn't give you warm fuzzies when you're using it. The interlock between the pot and the stove are, are really nil. I mean, there's a little bitty line that it kind of lines up on, but it doesn't lock it in at all. And it, if you're not really on stable ground, you gotta be careful. Because it is a single walled stove, it requires pretty constant refueling. And let's not forget the price, $100 for this stove hundred dollars. We'll keep in mind that for example for sixty dollars you can get a firebox stainless steel five inch which has got a lot more flexibility. For ninety dollars still less in this stove you can get the combo kit with all the extras and if you want something lighter for fifty dollars more you can get the titanium version of the Gen 2 firebox. Hard to imagine why this stove should cost a hundred bucks. Now I love Patagonia. I've used tons of their gear over the years. I love their down jackets, uh, their underlayers, socks, all kinds of stuff. The company makes great products. That said, I do not like the Patagonia stove very much. I checked it out beforehand. I had a feeling I really wouldn't like it, but in the end, just for you guys, I decided to pick one up because a lot of people have asked me to review it, so I did. I definitely do like the pot quite a bit. It's, it's well made. The copper bottom is pretty cool, but it's just too heavy. In the end, it feels like you're paying for the name Patagonia and it's just not worth the money. Sad, but I think true. It's a good stove, it works, but it's overpriced and you could get much better for cheaper if you look a little bit. I have tons of videos. In fact, if you check out down below, you'll see my playlist for stoves. It's over 100 videos now, all kinds of stoves, not just wood stoves, but gas stoves, solid fuel stoves, alcohol stoves, anything you could imagine. Check out that down below. If you like this video, guys, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. That really helps spread things across YouTube. If you're not subscribed, and I know a lot of you are not subscribed because I see my own analytics, hit that subscription button. really helps the channel out. If you want to make sure you know when I release new videos, hit that notification bell. And as always, guys, I truly appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Hope you liked this video. Hope I didn't disappoint you, but not my favorite stove. Thanks for watching, guys.